So BookTok kind of sucks, right? If you go on TikTok right now and start scrolling through all the book related videos, you'll find that the space is dominated by, though arguably not entirely occupied by, straight white American women screaming very enthusiastically about the same three or four romanticy books. Where even in a completely fantastical setting, the authors couldn't imagine a female character ending up with a man who isn't an abuser. <laughs> Even in a fantasy setting, the men are awful. <laughs> and readers like it. Like, are straight people all right? I'm, I'm so worried about them. So I wanna talk here about whether or not this is actually a problem. Does it matter that book talk is pretty terrible? And also, why is it terrible? Do I actually think that? Am I being dramatic? I want to approach this argument from as many angles as I can. I'm going to do my best here to be fair and argue back and forth with myself on this subject. So strap in, hopefully I do a decent job. I was inspired to make this video because a few days ago I was scrolling through TikTok when I saw a fantastic video from a creator called Celine. And the video is called Book Talk and Anti-Intellectualism. In the video, she talks about what book talk used to be how it was once a space for diverse readers to share recommendations and talk in a bit of detail with some rich analysis about the books that they've been reading and enjoying and why. Videos that are actually critical and engaging our brains a little bit. And now it feels like a very homogenous space. I really enjoyed this video and I'll link it in the description. And so after watching it, I tested this out a little bit. I typed book talk into the search bar and I just scrolled for hours hours. And I'm telling you, all I saw were straight white American women holding copies of A Court of Thorns and Roses, or Akatar as they call it, and just melting and screaming and going crazy. And occasionally you'd come across a man, and that man would always, every single time, talk about Brandon Sanderson or Stephen King. And it got to the point where book talk is so homogenous, so exclusively about smutty romanticy books for straight people, that there are hugely popular meme videos that mention the names of characters from these books, but don't mention what the books are, but everybody knows because those are the books. They are the only books on TikTok. Now I did say at the beginning of this video that this isn't entirely true. They dominate the book talk space, but they do not fully occupy it. I know because I exist on TikTok and I try and occasionally post book related things. And there are other great creators who actually talk about interesting things in a deep and meaningful way. As an example, I am friends on TikTok with a guy called Carter Kalchik. He's a fantastic book talker who talks a lot about interesting gay romance books and I've really been enjoying his deep dive recently into the works of Chuck Tingle. He's a charismatic guy who actually takes a bit of time and patience to talk about these things and it's lovely. Over on Instagram, I'm not sure if she has a TikTok or not, but I found her on Instagram. There is a creator called Spookish Mummy, as in mommy, not like a, a Egyptian mummy. <laughs> And she not only recommends really good gothic and horror books, but has a fantastic focus on world literature. She talks a lot about gothic fiction from South America, from East Asia, from Central America, from lots of different places. And I really appreciate that. Actual diversity and yet still within a specific niche. It's so good. Focusing on a specific niche that you enjoy, gothic and horror fiction, but making sure it is still broad and international, multi-ethnic, multi-racial, yes. Whereas when you scroll through TikTok, TikTok, thinking about it now, I don't think in the hours upon hours that I scrolled, I saw a single mention of a book that wasn't originally written in English and also written by a white person. It is so homogenized and uninteresting. And to go back to Celine's video, there is no critical thinking going on here. There is no analysis. There is no explaining why you like the thing. It's just sharing jokes and memes about the thing and the thing sucks. I've done a video about me trying to read this. It sucks. 
It sucks for a lot of reasons. Now to give BookTok its credit, which is something I really do want to try and do in this video, the current trendy book on BookTok seems to be this, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, one of my personal favourite fantasy books. And I know this makes me sound arrogant and pompous, but as I kept scrolling and seeing more and more smutty stuff, written by very problematic authors by the way, a lot of the time, I was genuinely surprised to see something of this quality get obsessed over by the booktop people. Because this is really good. The Priory of the Orange Tree is a very clever deconstruction of fantasy tropes. It queerifies things, it modernizes things, it feminizes things. It's a hefty book that follows a lot of the tropes in a really fun way and then cleverly subverts them and twists so much of the tiredness of the fantasy genre, especially the white man-led fantasy genre, all on its head all inside out. It's almost like a rebirth of the fantasy genre, especially the epic fantasy genre. It's a super clever thing and I adore it and I really need to give it a reread. I didn't see any of that conversation there on BookTok, I just saw the book pop up in videos where straight white American women were screaming and throwing it around or making memes, etc. Now, does any of this actually matter? Is it okay that BookTok sucks? Celine in her video talked about anti-intellectualism and she also mentions that if you bring this up as an argument, people will call you pompous and they will say, hey, people can just read what they want, it's not a big deal. And this is where the guilt starts seeping in for me because I used to be a high school teacher, an English teacher, and any time a kid was reading anything at all was a victory. If people are reading a lot now, even if the only thing they read is this Akatar series, is that bad? Shouldn't I call this a win? As someone who wishes more people read, isn't this great? BookTok is so popular, and that means more and more people are reading, and reading is great for so many reasons, but again, as Celine says in her video, BookTok is massive. It is massive as a platform for promoting literature, and the publishing industry pays attention to that. More and more carbon copies of these kinds of books will get published. They will be very badly written, they will be, as far as I can tell, unedited, they will be churned out on an assembly line because this is what the people want, even though I'd like to think it isn't. And this is something that scares me. I don't like the idea of walking into a library or a bookshop and publishers for months or even years have been focusing entirely on romanticy full of abusive men targeted towards straight white American women. It's a nightmare. Book talk lacks diversity. This is the problem. Celine is right in her video. There is an absolute lack of deep, immersive, critical thinking. But to be the devil's advocate to her video, TikTok isn't designed for that. TikTok is all about short form videos where people are very loud and excited and expressive and they talk enthusiastically about a thing that they love. That's what you see a lot of on TikTok. So I get that the platform doesn't encourage slow, considerate, mindful, intellectual, deconstructive thinking about literature. It is short, it is snappy and it is loud. But it's the homogenization that bothers me. As I said, I scrolled for hours through BookTok and I didn't see many of any books written by a black person or books that have been translated into English from another language. Every single book mentioned was written by a cishet white American and Samantha Shannon. Diversity is so important and when it comes to literature, when it comes to fiction, I kind of expect it. I assume very naively that people want diversity in their fiction because reading makes us more mindful and considerate people. It increases our capacity for empathy and so surely our tastes should grow and we will want to read more books by different people of different backgrounds, ethnicities, walks of life, etc. How does a space dedicated to fiction continue to be so homogenous, so bland, so beige, and so obsessive over things that are written badly? It's wonderful that more and more people are reading, but they are continuing to run a hamster wheel without expanding. They're not branching out and reading more diversely, they're staying in this little bubble where terrible, fantastic, Fantastical men treat women badly, like in real life. 
Where is the fantasy in that, by the way? Is it that they're fairies? There's not a lot of imagination going on. It feels like this goes really nicely with the rise of AI art stealing the art of actual humans and also threatening to make the world again more homogenized. If AI art ends up dominating any kind of art space, whether that be visual art, music, literature, etc., things become more homogenized. And based on the videos I've been seeing, I don't know if these readers, these TikTokers, would notice or care if a spicy romanticy book was written by AI because it would be the same as the rest anyway. If that's all that BookTok cares about, AI fiction will run amok and no one will notice or care. That's the most cynical I can possibly be about this. These books are badly written anyway and they are clones of each other anyway, and they're very uninspired and unoriginal anyway, would any of these obsessive, boring people care if suddenly all of Romanticy was written by AI? Isn't that just tragic that I can imagine that? I hate that. But as I said, I want to look at this from different angles, and I am glad that people are reading more, that we're promoting fiction more, and again, <laughs> Does it actually matter that BookTok kind of sucks? The thorn that is staying in my brain as I talk about this is what Celine said about how BookTok influences how publishing works. And if that is true, I don't wanna put all my faith in that argument, but what if writers from more diverse backgrounds start struggling even more than they already do to get their works published because they don't fit a specific niche that BookTok likes? And it is only one niche. I read very diversely. I built this channel and the Books and Bow blog off reading books in translation. I go through genre phase I'm very much a mood reader. I've spent the last like year or two reading nothing but horror, or at least it's felt that way. Right now I'm in a sci-fi fantasy mood and I'm almost feeling bad for the fact that I'm reading so much fantasy because BookTok is just full of romanticy books. I feel like I should read something else just for the sake of it. But then maybe all of this paranoia is completely unfounded and silly because publishing goes through trends. Very, very much so. For the past 10, 15 years, we have watched author after author churn out Greek mythology retellings until there are no more Greek myths left to retell. And to be clear, I like them. I've made quite a few videos on here about these Greek mythology retellings, so many of them from a feminist angle. At some point in the recent past, authors like Margaret Atwood and Madeline Miller noticed that women were overlooked in Greek mythology and they started to course correct that in a way. And now we have wonderful authors like Constanza Cassati, Jennifer Saint, and so many others writing a lot of good Greek mythology retellings. They're everywhere and I love them. That is a trend and I'm here for it. I've been reading these books for years and I continue to enjoy them. Also over the past few years, we've had a revitalization of weird science fiction with a capital W, a style of surrealist science fiction that was originally popularized by H.P. Lovecraft a hundred years ago. And now a hundred years later, and for the past maybe two decades now, we've had authors like Jeff Vandermeer, China Mieville, even N.K. Jemisin's getting in on it. These amazing modern authors have returned to an old, sub-genre of science fiction and are revitalizing it without the racism for the modern day. Or in the case of N.K. Jemisin actually addressing the racism in a really clever subversive way because that's what she does, she's a genius and I love her. Trends are par for the course. Isn't it okay that people on BookTok are obsessed with bad smut? And also just to be clear, I don't wanna come across like I hate smut. In fact, I have a vision of people in the comments calling me a prude for this. The fact is, I actually feel like this obsession with fairy smut, as I said in my Akatar video, it feels quite puritanical and prudish in and of itself. Like the people who are obsessed with the Court of Thorns and Roses have just discovered sex for the first time and are very, very excited about it. The way that these book talkers talk about spice and smut is kind of prudish because it feels as though they're giggling tee hee hee on the playground about sex. They've just learned about it and they're very excited. It feels naive and childish and weird and uncomfortable and very puritanical, honestly, which adds a layer of irony to this whole thing, I guess, when you remember that the masculine equivalent of all of this is Brandon Sanderson, a Mormon. I'm just so tired of it. Where's the diversity? And like Celine said, where is the intellectual, analytical, actual discussion being had? But as I said, 
TikTok just doesn't feel like the right platform for that, but is that an excuse? No, I don't think so. People could just talk about why they like a book instead of shouting, I like it, and then other people shout, I like it, and that goes viral, and then they make memes about it, and I feel brain dead. Book talk is a nightmare, and it's very, very boring. And after all of this, I still don't know if it matters. If Celine is right and this influences the publishing industry, then yeah, it really, really does. If it's just people talking about the things that they like without consequence and we're all free to like what we like and it's good that people are reading a lot, great. But if it has this enormous ripple effect that leads to a disinterest in original ideas and voices that are actually diverse and global, and my cynical idea of AI art just sneaking in there because no one on BookTok thought to notice or actually critically think about this stuff, then we are in a nightmare, BookTok's a nightmare, BookTok will bring on the death of diversity in publishing, and we're all screwed. Subscribe for books.